Alright man, I'm gonna make this quick, man. I've been um been under the weather the past two days. Didn't help it last night by drinking. You know, like crazy and then um you know the loss we took, but anyway. Um Atlanta man, give him credit for um coming in. Give him credit for coming in, um taking advantage of our defense, you know, um and I wouldn't even say the secondary because, you know, Matt Ryan, he only had 230 passing yards, but, you know, the running game was crucial against us. Just Devontae Freeman, I done gave this guy, you know, credit before. This guy just split up our um, defense. So, um, yeah, man. Hats off to the Falcons team. You know, they came in. You know, even though I hate the team, you know, they still came in, you know, took advantage of our defense, you know, you know, came out with the win. You know, under them circumstances, you know, um, you know, the Katrina, you know, the 10-year the anniversary of Steve Gleason's block and uh, Katrina in itself, you know, uh, they overcame all of that pressure. You know, for them to go into that environment and win the game, you know. So that that was a good thing for the Falcons as a team. Um, you know, for all of us, you know, um, going into this game, you know, I believe it's the anniversary. I'm pretty sure we'll have some more anniversaries, but um, basically, man, if we rely on, you know, the anniversary and Katrina and this stuff, you know, if we relying on that to get us a win, you know, at this point, man, I don't think that can, you know, that's on our side no more. I'm talking about, you know, as far as the environment in itself, you know, feeding back off of the crowd and stuff. The crowd was crazy last night going into the game. But at the end of the day, we got young guys, you know, on this team that hadn't experienced, you know, the Saints tradition like that. You got rookies out there babies out there that's playing so we really can't you know stick that type of um you know anniversary and game and crowd stuff you know far as the team feet and off of that you really can't even you know put that into the equation no longer you know at least at this time because you know we got a bunch of guys that hadn't you know that don't know about that kind of history far as the team and you know, they don't got that winning drive that, you know, we planted, you know, on the team, you know, up until the 2013 season. That was the last year. That 2012 season, I, I don't include that because that was a bullshit season. Um, but, you know, once we start letting, you know, vets go and, you know, guys that we could have kept, you know, now we're at the point where we're at now. And, um, you know, we can sit here and we talking about Sean Payton, you know, cats talking about the Sean on the hot seat and shit like that. You know, is it the end of the Drew Brees era? You know, stuff like that. You know, Sean Payton just signed a five-year deal. The only way he going to get up out of here, you know, I think is if, you know, he wants to leave and he walks away or if his contract runs out. And he don't resign. You know, them the only two options because I think Tom Betts are going to hold on to Sean, you know, until he wants to leave. We got too much history. You know, he done brought us so far. You know, it's going to take something like that, you know, to get Sean up out of New Orleans. I personally don't believe Tom Benson is going to say, I don't think you're the guy for us any longer. You know, we're going to move on. I, I don't think he's going to do that or make it. You know, I know Mickey's not going to do it, but uh, cause he's the reason, you know, the number one reason why we're in the position we're in now. We're over paying cats. I'm, I'm not going to get too in-depth, and I've said this before, but I'm just saying when, when we want to look at Sean and Drew saying, is this the end of an era? Number one, Drew Brees is playing like a top three QB in the league. Um as far as Sean, you know, he can get some criticism, you know, for 
you know, not having this defense. At the end of the day, he's the head coach, you know. And the guys that, um, you know, we have, we could have had, you know, more veterans out there instead of having babies out there on the field, you know, which cost us. I'm not going to blame Kim Crawler, but I'm saying it had a lot to do with our first two losses of the season. You know, coming down to an undrafted rookie cornerback guarding elite receivers in this game. You know, it shouldn't have to, we shouldn't have to rely on an undrafted rookie to make a big time play like that. But like I said, this is where we're at. You know, Mickey, if anybody need to be on the hot seat, it need to be Mickey Lomas. Because he's the one that gave out these big contracts. And, you know... Guys didn't live up to the, you know, contract. So now we release, you know, 90% of them. The only one that's really left, you know, is Jerry's. And we saw, we we all experienced last night. Um, so basically, man, that's just where we're at, man. Um, what we need to worry about is just um, getting a win. You know, at the end of the day, we're two games out of the division, but it's no use of even discussing that. You know, we can't even pick up, you know, a fucking win. You know, we just need to worry about getting a win, period. You know, trying to compare up to the division, that's not going to mean a sack of shit, you know, if we can't go out and, and win games. Had the crowd on our side at the beginning of the game, we could have took off. You know, we was up 7-0, getting the ball back. We could have stepped on the gas right there, but it's no excuses. That's our fault, you know. We allowed that pump block to happen. That's two weeks in a row that special teams don't play the crucial factor in this game. Because we pre I pretty much knew what the Falcons' offense was going to present to us. You know, I was just, you know, hoping that and believing that we was going to make a couple of stops defensively. You know, to help us out, which basically didn't, but, you know, we still had a chance to get the ball and go up, you know, two scores, but we didn't. You know, woulda, shoulda, coulda, you know, that's, that ain't, that didn't get us the win, you know, so, we sit here at 0-3 once again, we got the charges coming up Sunday, we got to, we got to get a win. We got to get a win Sunday, you know, so it's your boy CB, I'll come out with the pregame report probably Friday afternoon. I work, you know, some overtime tonight, then I work Wednesday and Thursday, so I won't be back on here the Friday, you know, give, you know, my scout report on the charges. This your boy CB, um, do that nation, you know, just stay, keep the faith, man, I mean, this is where loyalty is going to show. Loyalty going to speak right here. I mean, I, I can see social network and stuff. I, I know where the loyalty is. And it's not. Cats is not really loyalty. You know. I'm a Dow Hart fan. I'm going to ride through the good and the bad. That's what makes the good times more special. You know, if you just hopping on team to team that's doing good, that's really not no fan. You really can't embrace the shit like, you know, that. That's what made the Sean Payton era, you know, up to this point so special. Because we had a lot of bad time prior to his, you know, his tenure here. And anyway, it's your boy CB. I'm out.